Hello and welcome. Have you ever thought that maybe it's time to drop your LAN desktop and switch to Civil 3D? LAN desktop has been around for decades, but the last release of that LAN desktop software was 2009. It was replaced with Civil 3D, which has continued to progress in that time. Been many, many advances. Now, why would you still be on your LAN desktop? Well, it's comfortable. You can get your work done in it, and you've already paid for it. Why upgrade? I've got 10 reasons that might help you make up that decision. Listed in no particular order, Windows 10. The 2009 software is not compatible with Windows 10, just will not install. Now, if you go to buy a new computer, it's difficult to purchase a new computer with Windows 7 on it still. Most likely, it's going to come with Windows 10, making it very difficult to continue using your software with new hardware. Next, we have just AutoCAD features themselves. Since the 2009 release, Autodesk has progressed all the way up through the 2017 release of its software, and there have been many, many enhancements to the software in general. Performance increases, graphics feature increases, things like that. A few of my favorites are the annotation objects, text, dimensions, leaders, even blocks and hatching. Now, these will make life much easier for you when you go to change the scale of the drawing from one to another scale. You don't have to start over with all your dimensions and text. Automatic scaling comes in very handy. Another thing I really like new for 2016 was the fast dimensioning. Just a single dimension command will do all the dimensions you need to use. Now, there's many other things, but those are just a few that make it worthwhile. Coming in at number eight on our reasons to upgrade is the GeoMaps. This is a feature of AutoCAD in itself, not necessarily limited to just Civil 3D. Now, you might have some nice line work on your drawing, but wouldn't it be nice to see that in the context of what's out there? Two clicks, and you can have a satellite image brought in that fast. One more click, and you can actually embed this image into your drawing file, so it's not an external attachment anymore, and it's printable. The GeoMap feature is built into all AutoCAD-based products, including Civil 3D. Starting with the 2015 release, it became very easy to bring these images in and even plot those in AutoCAD. To make use of it, once you have a coordinate system assigned to your drawing, and they should have in Civil 3D, simply go to the Geolocation tab, bounce over to the Map On, Off, set this to Aerial, and that quickly, you have some context in which you perform your work. Coming in at number seven on our list is Field to Finish. Automatic drafting of your survey data. No more connecting the dots. No more placing blocks where you need to. Block placement can be done through description keys. Uh, line work, survey figures can be brought into your drawing automatically. And those survey figures can be used as break lines to augment your surface. Let's take a look at how that's done. The concept of field to finish is nothing new. With Civil 3D, it's been greatly refined. All we have to do is import some survey data. I'm going to go out and find my point file. It could be a field book file, or you could connect directly to the data collector. Make sure we pick the right point file format. And we'll bring these points in. It's going to bring in the points, going to connect the dots, everything we need to do. We jump back over to our prospector. Real quick, we're going to reorganize these point groups and rebuild all of them and kind of watch, of our, watch our drawing change. Now we can also create a surface very quickly from this data. Just call a simple name like EG. We're going to add a little bit of point data to this. Because I already had these point groups set up beforehand in my template, all I have to do is add a point group called ground shots. We'll jump back over to our survey. We're going to add all of our break lines as well. And one last step, we're going to grab a couple of buildings. I want to hide the contour lines inside of that. So back to our prospector, add these boundaries. And there is our survey data processed very quickly. Next on our list is data sharing. Data shortcuts and or vault can be used to accomplish this. It allows you to reuse large data sources, such as surfaces, or even smaller ones, such as just a simple alignment. It allows you to share these between multiple drawings, which in turn allows multiple designers on the same project. Let's take a look at how that can be done in Civil 3D with just a surface and an alignment. Data shortcuts allow you to reuse data, cut down on drive space, and will ultimately increase your overall efficiency within Civil 3D. For example, in this drawing, I have no surfaces listed. But in my data shortcuts, I have a surface I've referenced out from another drawing. I can simply create a reference to it in my current drawing, 
and look at it, and there it is. I can then take this, grab a alignment, create a surface profile, draw that in profile view, and just drop it in over here to the side and I can see what it looks like. There's my existing ground underneath that alignment. Now data references can also be updated. Starting with 2016, we have the ability to very easily manage these. And let's say the survey crew continued to work on it after I started my design work. So the existing ground surface, maybe after it's all finished, we have an EG final surface. I'm simply going to update this, point to that new surface, and click OK. And now we can see here we have a little detention pond or something that's being crossed with that alignment that didn't show up before. Number five on the list, dynamic model. This is what makes Civil 3D different from every other product on the market. It's more designing, less drafting. It's a true 3D model, and everything is all linked together. This means that profile views are nothing more than a byproduct of a surface and alignment. That also means that you move the mouse, you move the road. That's simple. We'll see how that's done. A dynamic model means that everything is linked together. For example, I have an, a surface, which is used to create the red existing ground profile here after I create an alignment on top of it. That can be further used to create a design profile and a corridor and cross sections. With LAN Desktop, once you get to that point, if you need to move the road, you have to start over. Civil 3D, it's a whole lot simpler. We can simply grab the alignment and move it around a bit. Change the whole overall alignment. We notice our profile changed just a little bit. I can change the curve radius. And I can even come down here and change the profile. And the cross sections over here to the right will also update as soon as I move this road. Simply grab a PI and drag it up a little bit. We're going to see that section at 5 plus 0, 0 changed with the road above it. We notice the cuts and fills change over here as well. As far as final drafting output goes, I don't necessarily like the way this looks. I want to make a quick change to that. Pick a different code style set, basically telling it what to make it look like. And now I should have something that's going to look suitable for my plan production drawings. Number four on the list, styles. Back to that concept of more designing, less drafting. Styles control the appearance of objects and labels in your drawing. For example, changing of contour intervals. Used to be with LAN Desktop, you have to stop, rebuild the surface, rebuild the contours, and it takes three or four steps. Now all you have to do is change the surface style, and you go from one and five up to two and 10 foot contours. No need to rebuild. In Civil 3D, styles are used to control the appearance of everything related to Civil 3D. I want to show you with surfaces simply because it's the most visible. In this example, I have a surface. I'm showing five and 25 foot contours with a green border around it. If I need to see a different contour interval, maybe one and fives, all I have to do is change the style being used. And I have one set up for one and five background. I'll simply apply it. And we see more contour lines appear as well as the labels associated with them. Now it's not limited to just contour intervals. There's many other styles we can make use of. I've done a quick analysis on this, and I want to show elevation banding. In this case, I've set it up to show me a floodplain. So the floodplain area is showing up in red. Everything above the floodplain is in green. Coming in at number three on the list is compatibility. Most Autodesk products are compatible with each other. Civil 3D interfaces with Revit, interfaces with InfraWorks, and a whole host of other products, mainly vehicle tracking for site analysis. This allows you to do sweat path analysis, ground clearance reports, parking layout, as well as roundabout design. And vehicle tracking understands Civil 3D corridors and surfaces, so you can do these with just a few clicks. Number two on the list is workflows, mainly with the suites. The suites come with a whole host of products. Number one is InfraWorks for your preliminary design work. This is allowing you to work with GIS data and drawing data in a SimCity interface. Very rapidly explore alternatives in just a few clicks. Find out if the road looks better over here or over there. And you can bring those preliminary designs directly into Civil 3D. No having to stop, start, rework everything. Just bring it directly into Civil 3D, do your engineering work, and continue on from there. And number one on our list is pricing. Many flexible subscription options available to you, including quarterly, annual, two, and even three-year subscriptions. This offers a low cost of entry, so you don't have to buy a $7,000 product for somebody who might only use it for six months. Subscriptions can be either standalone or networked, same as what you have now. 
And it can be for the single product of Civil 3D or for the infrastructure design suite as well.